Hi, um, I'm a sculptor. Uh, this is a piece of my three pieces of my work here. Uh, I work in uh, stone, plaster, bronze, very, very traditional materials. Uh, but juxtaposed with that uh, are the concepts that I work with. I work with um, platonic solids, which are those uh, that they're based on, uh, and uh, closest packing theory. Um, that's made of plaster of Paris. Uh, each individual separate form is a separate entity in its own right, it all comes apart, goes back together again. Uh, it exhibits uh, various symmetries. Um, it's also, the closest packing for me is, is also about, it's the connection to um, uh, phi, which in fine art terms is the golden ratio, uh, the golden section, um, and as a number is 4.6138, yada, 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 it keeps going. Um, that is a number that turns up a lot in nature and structure of natural objects and how things grow mm. and how things pack in three-dimensional space, which as a sculptor is what I'm really interested in. Um, I try and, for a lot of work, set parameters and rules and then allow the work to build itself. So the, the parameters for this was the, the shape and size of the, the box, that's a tray, it sits on the wall. Um, so it's only one piece deep. Um, and then the, the quantity of plaster that goes into each object. And then it, it packs of its own accord. It does what it wants to do. It starts off with a volume fairly regular, fairly uniform, and as it gets further and further up, the, the shapes get more and more deformed as the packing breaks down and they put it into different spaces. It's kind of, I think, sort of I, I like to think that it mimics a, a process of sort of cell division. Uh, but people read them in very different ways. I've had people turn around and sort of like say, oh, they look like trays of dinosaur eggs, or they look like dough balls, or somebody, the last exhibition I had in York last year, somebody turned around and emailed me and very apologetically said that they reminded her of breast implants. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I, I love that. I, I, um, people come to my work at, at, at different scales. So they'll walk in and they'll start looking at work and they'll decide that it's subatomic, it's cellular, it's molecular, it's... It's macro, it's micro, whatever it is. And I don't, I don't tell people what scale I'm making it at and what, how they should read it. I, I like the idea that people come to it with a, with a different interpretation. Um, a lot of this work came out of, I've got an Arts Council grant to work. I was uh, living down in Devon at the time and I um, discovered that there was an, an organisation, the department of the university there called Igenis which was part of the Economic and Social Research Council's um, program for disseminating the Human Genome Project to the, uh, the wider <coughs> world. And so I got access to their department and their big brains uh, on the basis that I just wanted to sort of talk to them and their students and sit in on some of the lectures to sort of uh, have some of that idea, those ideas feed into my work. At school I was terrible at science and maths, so I got into it when I was doing my degree rather weirdly. Um, but my work for the last 20, 25 years has all been based around various scientific uh, concepts. So this is the piece here. Um, again, they're sort of like uh, all based on dodecahedrons, uh, which is or the platonic, one of the platonic solids. Uh, closest packing theory feeds into that. More recently, I've been doing some work on uh, something called Voronoi cells, um, which is this piece. This is carved in stone. Uh, each shape is a, is a unique shape. It's a, uh, each one is a Voronoi cell. Basically, how it happens is that I put dots on the surface of the stone vaguely randomly, and the lattice creates the halfway point between the two dots. And so each lattice is exactly halfway between its neighbours and then its car. And that is a net that runs all the way around the piece and it closes. Um, from that, I've kind of discovered or uh, come across, discovered, come across a periodic tiling, which on a 2D level kind of like really fascinates me. Uh, the tiling plane is, is aperiodic, which means that you can't kind of like reproduce it like wallpaper. So if you copied that and then tried to stick it together, they, the, the, the pattern won't match. It's made up of two different shapes, the sort of large um, rhombus shape and the small shape, the narrower shape. Um, I kind of was looking at it and kind of like I started to see some patterns inside 
the, the structure. And I just started to ink in various, just chose a shape and started to ink it in. And there's this sort of like amazing sort of like substructure to it, which is sort of like uh, sort of almost there without you realising it until you start playing with it. I've some subsequently realised or found out that that's because of phi, the 1.6138 number, there are phi times more of one shape than there are of another. And each shape has a relationship within phi in the basis of the lengths of its um, sides and the angles as well. And I'm, I'm guessing, I'm sure somebody might know this, but I'm guessing that that's the reason why there is this level of structure underneath it. Again, choosing a different pattern, you can sort of like start to put in different shapes, different levels of structure. I'm kind of interested in this area here and this area down here, which is where the structure collapses. It doesn't close neatly into another pentagon there. And part of the problem I've got at the moment is this is kind of as far as I've got with this idea at the moment in terms of I can't generate a larger tile surface than that at the moment. So I don't know whether that ever shuts or whether that just kind of infinitely gets, stays open. But there will be this structure still surrounding it. So it's kind of intriguing for me, um, but also what I'm, what I'm interested in doing is taking these two shapes from the two dimension to the three dimension, and basically just making the two shapes as three dimensional blocks, almost like Lego blocks, and then seeing if there's a way of packing in three dimensional space which mimics or produces something that packs, as, that sits as two dimensional space as well. Now, as I said, this is about as far as it's got, and I don't know whether the maths is out there that is kind of like relatively simple, huh, not for me, it won't be, but we're relatively simple to explain or describe that process of packing these things in three-dimensional space. The way I work in terms of allowing the work to sort of self-generate, I'm not really worried at this point in time about what happens when I've got the two objects as blocks. It will just build itself. Something will be built. I'm interested in, in three-dimensional space, will it create a void like that, that is sort of almost like a, a void space inside of an object that could be built? And if it shuts, will it shut or not? Um, so these are sort of just issues that I'm sort of playing with at the moment in, um, in my studio. I've got to the point now where I think that basically all I need to do is just make a whole series of these blocks, probably just chop them out of NDF and start playing with them and start gluing them together and seeing where they're going to go. Um, but if anybody's got any uh, tips, hints, a bit of mathematics, a program that would generate an infinitely large one of these that I can play with would be amazing. Um, so, you can 3D by it. Sorry? You know, 3D, 3D modeling. 3D, you know, if you did 3D modeling, 3D software, uh -huh. you can get exact shapes, perfect mathematical shapes, yeah. just copy paste, copy paste, and you a 3D stuff. Yeah. The other thing is that these things have to... So you don't have to count them. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, oh. What's happened there then? Ah. Lawrence, help me out. <laughs> um, yeah, the other thing is that the tiles have to fit. There's, there's, there's rules for how they fit together as well. So it's a case of like having to set those rules up so that they end the face to face and so on. You can snap things to each other. Yeah. Snap it <coughs> right. Triangles. Okay. If you want to find out what happens rather than <coughs> chipping away endlessly, yeah. you can just find out really quick. There we go. Once you've worked it out. Right. Yeah. yeah so the, 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 they fit together in particular ways and particular rules. Penrose tiles. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You just have them angled. Get them three or four angles. Yeah. Then you're away. So, I'm not going to himself, but that's fine. Right. Getting three okay. really quick. Yeah. So I mean that's it's it's it, it sounds like there's a fairly simple solution, uh, except it won't be simple for me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it's kind of always simpler for me to sort of make a thing and do it. So, but the, the maths is kind of like you know that's interesting and, and you know that's kind of what I need to go where I need to go next. I think really. So, I mean, in, in terms of what my work, that that's kind of um, what I do, and and the the science behind it is. It's sort of fundamental to what I make. The thing is, if, you, if you're making it, if you're trying to find things out and you're carving it mm. at them angles, 
your, your little tiny imperfections that you're carving eventually are going to yeah, yeah, have a knock yeah. effect. And so if the angles so are wrong, then... Got, so you yeah. eventually you'll go, oh, well, there is a void, but the mic... No, if you're doing it yeah. perfectly, there might not be a void. The error, in, my in error creates the void. And yeah. 3D software is a mathematical yeah. space, so that's what you... So then the next leap to that is once you've done that on the computer is how to make it in physical If you're more interested physical in, in space. the physical thing, then that's fair enough. But if you want to yeah. get your ideas are more... It's kind of both, just to sort of partly yeah. ask the question of that it's possible to start with, and also you know, the, the process of, of how it maps out. I'm not really interested in designing on the computer. It's more a case of just answering questions as to whether it will work, um, and then how I, what I make it out of. Um, what that object? Well, you could get you could get three D, you could get three D software makes you make you yeah. however many you want, and then you could get three D printer to print it out yeah. really yeah. accurately. And then you but then you, and then you could you could make it yourself. And, you could, and after after yeah. you, and you stop at the same point, and your imperfections and that will then reveal themselves. Yeah. Uh, and it might not work in the same, not the same shape. I think we just improvised a bit of process at this point for now and ongoing, which is, I think it is okay to interrupt during the talk with a brief question, but I think we'll just, not that that, that was extremely interesting, but I'm just curious that how we're going to go on uh, with uh, subsequent talks and just being fair to all of yeah. the speakers. So I think yeah. there'll be five minutes for questions, so this is all my fault because I should have said that. <laughs> So my apologies for butting into that fantastic discussion. I think that's the way that we'll do it from now on. Uh, brief interjections followed by questions. Uh, so, so yeah, that's yeah. I think you you've got a couple of minutes to carry on with the rest. No, of the I'm that we're done. I think you know. I mean, it, it's just a very very answer, you know very brief description of, of, of what I do and, and how the process works. Um, you know, that's very useful for me. It seems, I mean, it might seem incredibly basic to you, but it is kind of not for, you know, it's not for me. So, hi. I recall coming across a website that could generate arbitrarily large Penrose tiles uh, with a simple web application, and it would be relatively easy for a mathematician to put together for you right. a simple program that could generate them randomly as large as you would like them to observe patterns and see if you can think out anything interesting. Yeah, right. That'd be really useful. Okay, well, we'll move on then. Thank you very much.